when we talk about the integrity of God, the integrity of God in the scripture will be found in what has been said about Christ, either by the prophets or in the epistles. What has been said about Christ. Jesus is the heir of what the prophet spoke. What did the prophet speak? They spoke concerning the sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. And Jesus is the legal owner of those things. The things that the prophet spoke applies to Jesus. Now, for example, look at Luke chapter 9 verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Next verse. And sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Next verse. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he will go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? So now they were trying to attribute what Elijah did to God. Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down and consume this village the same way Elijah did? That is to say, Elijah did it and it was okay because what Elijah did was confirmed by God because in their minds Elijah commanded fire to come down and consume and God answered the prayer by sending the fire down Jesus the same yesterday today and forever what he did before he will have to do again because there is consistency in his character so now to be able to clarify they said to Jesus, should we command fire to come down and consume them even as Elijah did? After all, it was God that answered Elijah's prayer before and God still answers prayer now and God will always answer prayer. So should we command fire to come down and consume these people just like Elijah did? Because Elijah also did it. After all, Elijah was a prophet. Now let's see what Jesus' response will be to these disciples of his. That same Luke chapter 9, give me verse 54 again. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? Look at the next verse. But he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. He rebuked them. Meaning if he was there when Elijah prayed that prayer, he would have rebuked Elijah. Because there are no double standards. He rebuked them for wanting to do what Elijah did in the name of God. He turned and rebuked them. So if he was there, he would have rebuked Elijah. Which also implies that the prayer was not answered from heaven. Because if the prayer was answered from heaven like they implied, he would have answered them from heaven also. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. That means the spirit that was in operation in Elijah at that material time was not the spirit of God. You know not what manner of spirit you are of. Oh God, answer it by fire. Let him be my God. <laughs> you better mind what you sing and think about what you sing before you sing it. Because the God that answered that prayer was not the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that's why Jesus said to them, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. That is, but my spirit in you is not the same spirit that answered that prayer. 
you know not what manner of spirit you are of then look at what jesus said in verse 56 for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them and they went to another village that means god's power can only be found within the framework of salvation god's power can only be found god's power is only demonstrated and god's power is only validated within the framework of salvation you know not what manner of spirit you are of the son of man has not come to destroy but to save so god's assurance is in salvation god's assurance is not in destruction god's assurance is in salvation the gospel is the power of god to save the gospel is not the power of god to destroy the gospel is the power of god to save the integrity of god's word will be within the framework of salvation the integrity of god's word is within the framework of salvation i mean look at the four gospels and the book of acts you will see god's assurance clearly manifested in salvation both in the four gospels and in the book of acts you know people have strange views about god fighting for them god will fight for me god will fight for me and most of the times when they say that they are trying to force god to respond within the framework of their anger god will fight for me they are drawing god within the framework of their anger and trying to get god to execute their anger and they forget that the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of god so what they call god fighting for me is an expression of their anger in fact to make them feel better they even have a different way of saying it they say it is holy anger i have holy anger there's nothing like holiness in anger bible says sweet and bitter water cannot come out of the same fountain anger cannot be an attribute of god god can only be seen within the framework of salvation so the integrity of god's word will say bless and curse not bless and curse not pray for those that abuse you pray for those who despitefully use you bless them and cost not that's the integrity of god's word so jesus corrected all the wrong impressions about god jesus corrected all the wrong impressions about god did you notice that in the four gospels the ministry of angels did not accomplish any single destruction both in the four gospels and in the book of acts you will not see where angels destroyed anybody even when they went in to save they saved without any casualty even when they got involved in helping they helped without killing anybody why because the power of god is only made manifest within the framework of salvation